right, well, it's my pleasure to talk with you today about HIPEC or hyperthermic intraperitoneal perfusion with chemotherapy. Uh, I'm Brian Badgewell. I, I specialize in gastric cancer. That's all I do. Um, and it's, it's been my, my passion uh, and really my, my career to focus on treating the most common site of metastases of gastric cancer, which is the peritoneum. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I've, I'm going to define a lot of terms, so I, um, I hope it won't, won't uh, be too much Dr. Lingo, but uh, again, just very glad to be here with you today. I hope this is helpful. Okay, so HIPEC, that stands for hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy. So the hyperthermic part, that's easy. We know heat has a direct anti-tumor effect. Intraperitoneal, now the peritoneum is the abdominal cavity. So, so the way I describe this to patients is the stomach is like a small sac. It's within a bigger sac. Uh, and that bigger sac is the peritoneum. So you can get in between those and then distend it with air in the case of laparoscopy or if you want to look around. Or in this case, we're putting chemotherapy in that space. So it works best on tumors that stay in this peritoneal area and, and that aren't invasive. Uh, the chemotherapy, well, you know a tumor is bad when you have to put chemotherapy directly on the tumor. And that's what we're doing here. But we do use agents that work better with heat. Now this is the HIPEC setup, and, and it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, this is the perfusion pump here. And uh, you know we have a lot of these laying around because we don't do as much heart surgery, and this is from a heart and lung machine, but it's, it's just a simple perfusion pump to push the chemo along. This is a heating element, and here's another element here, so that's how you heat it, and this is a reservoir for the fluid. And so this is what it looks like taking a step back, but you have the heated chemo going in, this tubing here to the patient, and then here the heated chemo comes out. And, and it's as simple as that. It's just a mechanism to administer heated chemo to the patient. Now, HIPEC, it, it is standard of care in appendix tumors, uh, mesothelioma and ovarian cancer, but it, it's controversial in colon cancer, although it is included in the national cancer guidelines, but it's very controversial for gastric cancer. Uh, in theory, it makes sense. You, you cut everything out, you apply heat, you give the chemo directly to the tumor and you use chemo that works better with you. So it, it makes a lot of sense, but I need to be very clear that there has never been a completed trial that compares HIPEC to standard of care chemotherapy for gastric cancer. And so that's really the dilemma that, that we're in. We've never had that randomized clinical trial where we compare both options. And, and so that's why it's a, a bit of an unknown. And I'm going to go over that today. Now, just to show you what this works well in, this is an appendix right here. Uh, it's, uh, this is in centimeters. Uh, this is the cut edge of the appendix. Uh, normally, it's less than the size of, of your pinky, but here we have a tumor in the appendix, and this doesn't look bad, but if this ruptures, it can create this mess here, which is just buckets of this gelatinous tumor. I'm, I'm sorry for the gross picture, but this is also called pseudomyxoma. So if you see that term, it just means this gelatinous substance that's produced. And this is what HIPEC works best for. Now we're going to move on to gastric cancer and peritoneal metastases. So the spread of, of gastric cancer to that lining of the abdomen, uh, the survival is challenging there. Now, current national guidelines recommend systemic chemotherapy only. Uh, so you treat with the first line chemotherapy. You wait until that stops working or you get side effects. And then you go on to second line chemotherapy, um, which isn't as good as first line. And, and really, there's no third line option. At that point, you can start considering a trial. So, so that, those are the standard guidelines. But we're, what we're trying to do here is to push the envelope and do something to be more aggressive and to, and to give better survival. And these are the two, to the two areas we're aiming at. So this is carcinomatosis here. So this is the stomach here. So food comes in here and moves along the stomach like that. And this stomach's abnormal. It's uh, white along its length. It's got tumor that's just going along it. Uh, and what's happened is the tumor cells have jumped off. And this is the lining of the abdomen here. And those little white dots are where the tumor is spread. So here's a close up here. And you can see these little white dots. That's what we're fighting against. Uh, here's another area of the abdomen. That's the lining of the abdomen. Here we're looking down in the pelvis and there's a few white dots there. So that's carcinomatosis. Now what also can happen is you can have positive cytology. So here's the stomach here. That's the white tumor growing along. And it looks bad. You can see it growing through the wall of the stomach. And, and we know cancer cells are jumping off here. You don't see them, on, see them on the lining of the abdomen. But when we put saline into the abdomen, take the saline out and spin it down, we can find microscopic cancer cells. So both of these represent stage four and gastric cancer and are incurable. Now the peritoneum, this is the problem because it's the most common site of metastatic disease at diagnosis. Often you need a minimally invasive surgery with a camera like I'm using here to identify this. 
This often does not show up on imaging like a CAT scan or a PET scan. It's also a problem because it's the most common site of recurrence after surgery. So you've been through chemo, maybe radiation and a potentially curative gastrectomy. Uh, but if it's gonna come back, the peritoneum is the most common site. Chemotherapy may not be as effective here. Uh, and I'll uh, describe it here. Typically we need blood vessels to deliver the chemotherapy to the tumor. You can see some small blood vessels here, but it's not like the tumor sitting within a liver or a lung where you have a lot of blood vessels. This is very tough to penetrate with chemotherapy. Now, the plan, what I'm gonna to show today is I'm gonna review some of the older data, uh, specifically what's going on in Asia, because I think that can be confusing. I'm gonna talk about what most of the studies have done, which is compare cytoreduction reduction and, and doctor term here, I know. Cytoreduction reduction is also uh, defined as cytoreductive surgery or debulking. It just means to cut out all the tumor. So cytoreduction reduction versus cytoreduction reduction with HIPAC. And we have studies from China, France, and Germany on that. We have an ongoing study, which is cytoreduction with HIPEC versus standard of care chemotherapy. Now, this is the study we all want, right? Because I said this doesn't exist. We want to compare HIPEC with what is the current standard of care chemotherapy, but it's recently been started in the Netherlands. And then I'll talk about some current options, which are uh, some of my trials. Now, the names are also a little confusing. Uh, if you're going to have a trial, you have to have a cool name. So we have the cytochip study that comes out of France. We have the GastroChip also out of France. We have the GastroPec out of Germany. We have the Periscope out of the Netherlands. Uh, and then we have the Yang study out of China. They did not come up with a cool trial name. So I just used the first name of the, uh, of, the invest, uh, of the investigators and that we'll call it the Yang study. I don't have any cool names for my studies either. Now, these are, this is some of the older trials that have been done in, in Asia. And what they did is they compared HIPEC and gastrectomy versus gastrectomy alone for patients that were high risk for peritoneal disease. So they didn't have that established carcinomatosis or positive cytology, but they had thick tumors and we were worried about them getting carcinomatosis later. So uh, you can see a lot of these trials are older. They're all from Japan and China. And so you would look at this and think that HIPEC is a standard of care in Asia, uh, but it's not. So I was recently the American College of Surgeons traveling fellow to Japan, although it looks like I'm just eating nice meals with some of the experts in gastric cancer. Uh, I did watch a lot of surgery and I talked to them and, and HIPEC is not a standard of care in Japan or China or Korea. What they most often look at is using intraperitoneal cold chemotherapy and they repeat it similar to an approach here. I know that's gonna be talked about in a separate uh, talk today, uh, so I won't get too much into it, but that's what they're investigating in Japan. You might also hear about uh, what I call the dilution approach, which is where you use water to uh, wash out the cancer cells. But uh, there has been a trial that was recently completed, and that's a negative trial. These are survival curves here, and they're right on top of each other. So the dilution approach does not work. So I won't talk about that. Okay, now this is the cytochip study. So this is out of France. It was a 25-year study that ended in 2014. And what they compared, again, is they compared that debulking, the cytoreduction and HIPEC, versus the debulking or the cytoreduction alone. And the first thing we need to note is that the mortality rate is high, it's 10%. Uh, now that's high for a surgery. Typically the mortality rate is one or 2% with our surgeries. Uh, the complications or the major morbidity was significant, but this was what was shocking is that we had a 20% five year survival. We use that five year survival mark because if you get to five years and the cancer hasn't come back, that's pretty much a cure. So 20% was impressive. Uh, it created a lot of enthusiasm when it was shown at GI ASCO back in 2018. That's one of our big national meetings. But you have to understand it's very selective. It was an average of less than one patient per center per year. This is a study that was published in one of our big reputable journals. And so again, in the blue, they've compared HIPEC and cytoreduction versus that cytoreduction alone. This is a big difference in, in the survival curves. Uh, it's a lot more than you often see with chemotherapy. But the perineum is still a problem. As shown in the pie chart here, the green and the red show that it's still most often recurred in the perineum. The blue is an isolated recurrence outside of the perineum. So when it came back, it most often came to the perineum. So there's a lot of work to be done here. And I think we still have equipoise in this. Now, equipoise is a term that means counterbalance uh, in studies. So when we really don't know what the right thing to do is, and I won't get into these studies too much, but I just show them. Uh, they came out of our institution, and we can get long-term survival without using HIPEC. And, and so these um, here we had a 21% five-year survival when uh, we used chemotherapy and radiation and sometimes surgery. 
Um, and even with a peritoneum, which is which is one of the most difficult sites to treat, I found a 13% five-year survival when we were aggressive with surgery and chemo outside of HIPEC. So I, so I think we still need this trial to compare different approaches to know for sure. Now, this is the Yang trial. So this is out of China and 40% of the world's gastric cancer comes from China. So this is a very small study for them. There are only 34 patients in each arm. That's what this N is, the 34 patients in each arm. All of these patients had carcinomatosis. And what they compared was the cytoreductive surgery, the debulking and the HIPEC versus the cytoreductive surgery alone. And so there's not a huge difference, but you do see some. And so this is a signal that HIPEC does work. Now there's also the gastric chip study that's in France and uh, that's not done yet. But what they're gonna do is they're gonna compare gastrectomy alone to gastrectomy and HIPEC in patients that are high risk for peritoneal disease. So they don't have that established carcinomatosis, but can we prevent the carcinomatosis later? This is gonna be a big study because this, if this turns out to be positive, then it could mean that a standard of care is having a HIPEC at the time of a gastrectomy. The next study that's ongoing is Gastropec out of Germany. And those were for patients with carcinomatosis. This was important because everybody got standard of care chemotherapy. Uh, and what they compared was removing the stomach with cytoreduction um, versus the same with HIPEC. So does the HIPEC add anything? <clears throat> it was stopped early, but it should be reporting soon. And so that'll be another signal whether HIPEC works, it works for this disease. Now, this is a study we all wish uh, we were doing. That's the Periscope 2 trial out of the Netherlands. That's going to compare high tech to standard of care chemotherapy. And it should be coming out within a few years. So this will answer a lot of questions for us. Now, I just wanted to show a lot of the ongoing trials before I got to my own work. But uh, this is the, um, the first fit, uh, clinical trial of high that was completed in the United States. And when I designed this trial, I wanted it to be simple, but I wanted it to be safe. I wanted it to minimize complications. All patients had to get chemotherapy because that's standard of care. That wasn't negotiable. And we wanted to perform it in patients where we could cut out all the tumor. So this is how we designed it. So it was for patients where we identified peritoneal disease. All patients got standard of care chemotherapy. And then we did a minimally invasive or laparoscopic HIPEC without cutting out the stomach. So we wanted to make the HIPEC work before we got to the, to the gastrectomy part. And I was also very concerned about adding HIPEC with the gastrectomy just due to the high complication rate that we were seeing on some of those other studies. We used uh, these two drugs, mitomycin and cisplatin, and you could repeat this minimally invasive HIPEC. It's pretty well tolerated. Patients stay in the hospital for two or three days. And then if we could get to the point where all the peritoneal disease was gone, then we would offer gastrectomy. And it was just a gastrectomy alone. Again, I, I did not want to add the HIPEC at that point. This was the procedure. Uh, we had inflow cannulas here, outflow cannulas. That's how we administered the chemotherapy. This was a small incision where we inserted the camera. What was nice is you get a diagnostic laparoscopy at the beginning of this procedure, and we can see how the chemotherapy works. It's very difficult to see peritoneal disease on imaging, and so that was a very helpful part of the study. But really, regardless of what we saw, we treated with the heated chemotherapy. <clears throat> it was going in at 42 degrees Celsius. It went for one hour. These are the drugs we used. We also gave a drug called thiosulfate to protect the kidneys from the cisplatin. And this is how the trial went. So we had 19 patients, and we, we went and performed multiple HIPEC procedures, and we got to where seven patients had negative cytology or no carcinomatosis. Ultimately, five patients chose to have surgery and underwent the gastrectomy. Well, the big question is, did it work? Well, the, the three-year overall survival rate was almost 50%, which is uh, much better than what we get with chemotherapy, but we don't have that comparison arm, so, so I can't answer whether it worked yet. I will tell you, we only had one out of 19 patients that appears to be cured. That patient's uh, only had positive cytology, but the cancer hasn't come back and it's been over five years. But one out of 19 wasn't good enough for us. So we came up with our next trial and this is a more aggressive trial. And the way we designed this, again, everybody gets chemotherapy. So they get standard of care chemotherapy and then at least one minimally invasive high pack. But if it looked like we could cut out all the tumor at that point, then we performed what I call the whole enchilada, a cytoreduction, reduction, the gastrectomy, and the HIPEC. I wasn't as concerned anymore about adding the HIPEC with the gastrectomy, and I wanted to be more aggressive. But it's, a very, it's very much a two-stage approach. So first is a minimally invasive HIPEC. We get an idea of how bad the disease is or how good it has responded to chemotherapy, and then we decide if it's the right thing to do to combine the gastrectomy and the HIPEC. 
similar three-year overall survival rates, a little less than with the other approach, but I think this approach is better because I have four patients that are getting relatively far out. They're beyond three years now and the cancer hasn't come back. So I'm, I'm hesitant to use, use the cure word yet, but, uh, but I'm hopeful. And, and that would be an improvement. So it's slow, slow improvement. There's also a trial ongoing at the NCI. And so that'll be another data point where we get an idea about whether HIPEC works in gastric cancer. And this is the, the algorithm that I use right now. Um, and so I'll just kind of walk through it. So for patients that have uh, established peritoneal disease, we always do first line standard of care chemotherapy. We also frequently use multidisciplinary conferences where we get all the experts together that treat cancer and we decide as a group what the right thing to do is. We can then offer a laparoscopic HIPEC after that first line chemotherapy. Another option would be to go on to second line chemotherapy. Then we bring it back to the multidisciplinary group. And if it's the right thing to do, we can offer gastrectomy, the bulking and high pec off, uh, off protocol now. <clears throat> I think it's important to note there are markers and some options for immunotherapy or targeted therapy that are important to consider here. And so um, we always have a medical oncologist involved in these multidisciplinary conferences. That's a very important part of this. Okay, so in summary, what's the current status of high pec and gastric cancer? Well, the peritoneum is the best target and we need to keep fighting against the peritoneum if we're gonna improve survival in gastric cancer. HIPEC can play a role. Uh, I think clinical trials are very important in this. I have submitted a clinical trial to the, to the NIH and it wasn't approved, but we're gonna keep trying. Um, and we just think this is a very important to get a cooperative group and a, a national trial going in this. We do currently offer that two-stage approach I showed off protocol. Um, we also have some ongoing trials where we're trying to lower peritoneal disease prior to gastrectomine HIPEC. And so I have some intraperitoneal paclitaxel trials ongoing here at Anderson. Then lastly, I would just like to mention, we were going to be the host of the International Gastric Cancer Congress in 2021 here in Houston. That has been canceled for now. And then we're looking to have that in March of 2022. And I think that's gonna be important for patients because we will have a, a patient panel there and uh, hopefully a lot of uh, important information for you. So thank you. It's been my pleasure uh, talking with you. I, I hope you found that useful. Mm -hmm.